the lockdown is treating you proper. It's Thank treating you, you right. You know. <laughs> Congratulations on your new music, Chifu. But it's not so new. Thank but we are going to get to that part. <laughs> we are going to get to that part. Um, okay. So, um, okay. So, but now during this lockdown, you succeeded for a lot of creative people. There was that dream. A lot of creative people because of the un uncert uncertainty that came with um, the lockdown of the time. So, yeah. how did that affect your creative process? Um, you know, because I already recorded this song, and um, let me even get to like releasing the song. Well, my creative process it was difficult, but I had a friend who um, BK, who is also a singer that was like my neighbor, so we were able to do stuff together. We released, uh, we wrote a song together, Tomorrow Comes, and we put it out there. And people were like, well, you're not obeying the rules. You're not doing quarantine. I'm like, calm <laughs> down. This guy is on my You know, so, I mean, that was how I could survive. Yeah, really. but uh, for Chipo, which you just released, I've heard Chipo performed on different stages. I remember last year during the Future Awards Africa, um, when you performed it, yeah. I told you that that was that was beautiful, that was brilliant. I believe I was not the only person who told you that. So, but why wait yeah. for that long to release it? Why wait till May first to release it? Okay, so um, before then, when I did it at Future Awards, I I didn't have the song recorded at the time, and it wasn't because I didn't. I mean, I wanted to record, but I had. I had um, I had a picture in my head. I wanted I wanted some specific people who would understand and interpret the song to produce the song. So mm -hmm. and those people at the time they were not exposed. They were so busy. Plus, I mean, I was trying to gather money because I wanted to record most of the stuff live. Uh, like the violin was live, the drums live, um, even some 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 of the percussions live we had the bass every almost everything was live so i knew it, it was um uh like it was capital intensive yeah so i was trying to you know put myself together to release the song so and then eventually the song was ready but current covid19 came so i was now like okay so when am i going to release this creatives, the creatives are scared to release because they don't know how well the song will do but i think everybody's at home and i mean it's a good time to chill and listen to stuff i i, I see that you already jumped on the tiktok fever everybody is trying to um leverage on tiktok right now so how important is um leveraging on those tools for your music well and what's the challenge about yeah okay looking at it we know songs that are, you know, don't rush. You know how those songs, you know, I really want to do 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 Paul and see me. You know how this TikTok has really helped them. So, I mean, it's just me trying, trying out, you know, that platform as well. So that's done. It's, it's, it has done well for songs. And um, yeah, so I decided to jump on it. But my own challenge is family oriented. So because um, cheerful is everybody kind of songs and everybody's song so i um i did the song with my mom i did my own challenge with my mom my sister and my little brother so it's just a way to say oh we are together in this quarantine oh, morning has come oh, it's a new dawn oh, you know so yeah i am encouraging everybody to get on it and do their, do their challenge and show me how cute your family is talk about you've been in the music scene for um major for a little over two years i believe okay well um let me let me just let me i don't know how to put it well okay i started singing when i was a child so i was in an all-female acapella group i think i was 11 when we started moving around in Lagos, I grew up in Apapa, so I went to school in Enugu, 2007, and that was when music, as JDS, started for me. So I had collaborations with people like Fino when, you know, we're all in Enugu together, and Buki, 
B-O-U-Q-U-I, Buki, when she came to the East to promote one of her songs. And, you know, so I would say since 2007, you know, that's a long time. And I've been pushing and I was under a label then, No Time Records. We had Wiz Boy, the guy that sang, Oh, Musagi, I don't know if you know that song. Yeah, we had yeah, Zero, yeah, Swag Bag, I don't know. If... Yeah, so we were mates at the time. And then, um, then after a while, nothing was happening. Fast forward to 2013, I got on Destiny Child Talent, Gospel Talent Show, and I won the show 2013. 2017, I went for The Voice, and then I, be, I was one of the finalists. And I was still doing stuff, you know, still pushing. And here I'm right. So, I've been there, grinding. Yeah, you've been pushing. I, I can see and um, the, the, the result is actually showing. But do you think um, reality TV show comes with its own curse? Because a lot of pressure now comes on you. Um, a lot of it, there's not that expectation from you, from you for your music. Yeah, it, it is because um, I, I'll, I'll say yes, because if you look at it, many, most people, uh, I think that, I don't know if they rely on their voice, you know, to do the work, you know, or maybe some of the deals or the contracts that they get after the show kind of like limits them so they cannot really move beyond what they want to do and it's it's challenging i think sometimes this whole deal record deal it's it's crazy so um for me i think i just i did not really get into any any of those um deals so i just kept pushing grinding and that's what it and it's not easy to because sometimes you're tempted to want to you know go all out look for investors i also understand that investors it's not easy to get someone to put in money and then you now on the third year when you're supposed to be yielding you you now want to walk out of the contract so that's not fair on the people investing and and then it's just this whole thing is it's crazy so talent shows i i want to I want to believe that anybody who got on a talent show is, is talented, can sing, but then I'm not sure about um, everyone being an artist, you know, artist, artist. I'm not sure about everybody being that. And um, you did mention that you were signed to a record label. What happens? What, what happened to that? Okay, so you know this kind of signing where you don't have paper, pen on paper? That was the kind of it was in Enugu, so we were just all in the record label. Myself, Zoro Swag Bag, and then there was no official record. So what happened was, um, the press, the my manager at the time was an artist, and he was trying to push himself as well. So it wasn't easy. There was no, no guy at the top somewhere, you know, dropping money. So everybody was just doing their thing, and then that was how we just fizzled out and. Zoro is doing well now. Jedes is trying. <laughs> so, no, I, yeah. I, I must say you're doing well because um, I remember um, I was in a room with um, Waje a few months ago. I think it was in January. And she was really excited about your process. When she was talking about um, new school artists that are pushing, that are pushing themselves, your name came up because she yeah. said, um, I think you performed at her um, concert last year. At Red Velvet, yes. Yes, the Red Velvet concert. Um, concert. So, Wajie talked about how you were pushing yourself, and I saw you at every con at every major event last year. You were Jadis was performing the Future Awards Africa. You were there. Um, there were some all, those December events, and you just see all those really corporate and really nice events. You just see Jadis with her guitar. Yeah. Which means you really pushed yourself. What changed last year? Uh, because. People watching you would see that you were really deliberate about your process last year. So what changed? Um, okay, so um, usually, before now, I'll just go about singing my uh, singing covers and just doing weddings, just do stuff. So um, a time came, I was like, why don't you just try? Because, you know, people want to know JDS for JDS, not the cover girl, the girl that always, you know, so... I decided to, I deliberately tried to 
you know, do a song that is mine. And I also know that there's a challenge with up and coming artists doing their own song because you do a song and people cannot, I mean, they don't know the song. So yeah, they just listen and it's usually very discouraging. So it wasn't that I was, I did anything different. I just started doing my own song. So I'll do the covers and then I'll do, I'll do my song and I'll, I'll teach them. And people loved it. So when I, and I figured, I noticed that when I did it, I'll get somebody else to say, oh, come and do the same song here. And that was how I was just, even for free, I used to sing, sing free. I love the So you, you mentioned something which is very important in, um, for upcoming artists, which is a culture of, people know that you, people know that you have a great voice. People have seen you on um, TV. I remember watching you um, on The Voice. Voice, but yeah. then they still come up with, to you with the question of, can you do this for free? You know you need the platform. So how have you handled that conversation in your process of uh, coming up? If I can do for free, right? Yeah, you people always, people time. know, people know what you bring to the table. People have seen you perform. Yeah. People know that you are on the voice. Mm -hmm. People know that you have the voice. Mm -hmm. But they'll still come mm -hmm. to you telling you it's something that happens in nigeria a lot and uh, telling you to do this for free that mm, you know you're promoting yourself people will get to see you um like what chris rio said um it's part of the hustle have you handled that do you turn them down or do you weigh them based on oh this platform is good for my brand genuinely or how do you do it okay so i i do i do the both like i turn down some especially if i know that it won't do any good right to my brand because some people invite you and they, they don't even have their sound together right so you're just going to go there sing for free mess up your career because a bad sound <laughs> matter how good you sound with a bad sound <laughs> you're, you're going to drown so i try to find out if things are in place and then if it will help my career and then also be sure that i am not going to because performing live takes a lot you get i have my guys and i can't keep telling them every time oh sorry this one is for free sorry this one how do i now get money to even say oh thank you for your effort because instrumentalists they don't want to know no matter how free the gig is you pay their transportation you know you have to feed them because rehearse, sometimes this whole this thing it takes a lot to prepare for it for an event it takes you to want to glam look same clothes like you you can't be wearing the same clothes all the time they will, they will tag you as that girl with that particular gown so it's not it's not easy so i i i i turn down some especially if it's not going to do any good but i enjoy singing i enjoy singing and if it's a good, if you have good sound and it's not going to stress me out too much and, I, and I'm boxed up, I can come and sing for free for now. <laughs> <laughs> I, li I like it for now. I, I like when you said for now. Um, that is um, truly important, which, you, which makes you, which shows certainty that you know that this phase is, um, this is a, your starting phase and then you know that you're going to get mm. to a point where you are still going to charge in the millions. Um, when you were answering one of the questions, you talked about the Nigerian factor. So when you yeah. come um, come into a space, you have to um, teach the people your song. You have to do certain covers that you feel some Nigerians would like. So yeah. have you felt any pressure to change your sound to um, something more commercial, as yeah. they would put it? So I felt that pressure. Let me try and see if I can find my way inside. So I felt that pressure a lot last year. The beginning of last year. It was almost like I was trying to find myself again. So um, I had someone call me. Someone very big in the industry called me. And then the person was like, Judas, I would like to work with you. Come to the studio. So I got to the studio and I, there was this producer there. Um, you can tell that he's that kind of producer make beats and then you vibe you just vibe you get so and i am not it's not like i'm not used to that i mean i can create anything on any any beats but i am my kind of music i like to like sit down write 
appreciate, right? But it didn't happen because at the time, I wasn't really doing much. So it was almost like I was not, like I was not current, you know. Mm. So I had to talk to a friend. I had to talk to a friend. And he was like, JDS, this is the industry that we are in. You have to vibe. They don't even want you to sing. Like, don't sing. Don't really, if you want to say a line, don't sing it. You know, talk it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what Nigeria Nigerians want because they don't have time to release. They want to be able to feel like, oh, they can sing like you're singing, you know. So I also, know, so I know that, I know that. So at that point, I was pressured. Like, I was trying to now create things outside my kind of music. And I have some, and I did very well with them, but I've not put them out yet. So, but Chia 4 is like me, 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 me. It's me, my, my style. So, so. So let's yeah. talk. Let's talk about. Let's talk about you. Uh, really amazing the things that artists have to go through. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> it's really amazing, and um, I do not envy you. I do not envy you. But uh, all I can say is I wish you all the best. <laughs> but let's talk about Chifo. Um, I've listened to Chifo Thanks. several years. Yeah. Few days, a few days before May first, you put up a post and that uh, oh, people should be anticip. Um, people should anticipate that Chifo means a new dawn. And a lot of people are like, oh my God, I'm yeah. gassed. I can't wait and all of that. So tell yeah. us about Chifu, the meaning, um, what the song mm -hmm. means to you, the whole process mm -hmm. um, of creating the mm -hmm. song. Okay. So um, <clears throat> cheerful is an evil phrase. I explained it in one of the videos I posted on my page. It means the break of dawn. It's like when you sleep and you wake up uh, and your mom is saying, stand up like it's, it's it's a new day stand up or morning don't reach <laughs> your buzz i think it means um odrumotim or something like that in your battle so so that's what it means and the song it came when you know after the voice i i came back on i think on a friday and i lost my dad like a few days after so i was still in lagos wow. and we're yeah, so we're preparing so to... Sorry like, about that. Thank you. I was preparing to go to Enugu because at the time my parents had moved to the east and they were there. So I was preparing to go back and all of this happened. In fact, we're having our divorce final party. The news and it was crazy. So I didn't know how... I was supposed to be going on interviews, you know, as a finalist and stuff. So it was, it was, it was a hard time for me. So, um, and then I got encouragement from people trying to say, don't worry. It was, it was fresh for me. And it was fresh, you know, people saying, I used to be the one to say that to people, but people kept saying, oh, don't worry. He's in a better place. And all of that stuff didn't do anything for me. So, um, and I kept crying and crying and crying. So, but um, I, I got to a point where I had to pick myself up and say to myself, you cannot drown you cannot allow this drown you you have to stand up push what would your father um, want you to do you know if he was or if he were to be alive so i had to pick myself up i started going for interviews um you know it wasn't easy you know and then eventually it, it was almost like I, I won't be able to do anything musically for the, for for the time you know or at the time but yeah, I couldn't record stuff, but um, I was writing. So Chiefo came, the melody came, and I was like, you know what? Jadis, it's a new dawn. Just start afresh, do stuff, push. So that was how the song came. And then I, I had to, because I, I also, I know how I grew up, and I know that I, I saw people go through stuff. So I had to, like, try to put my lyrics relates make the, the song relatable so in the lyrics mm. you hear where i said mama jollof rice why your temper they rise you, you know i remember my mom owned a restaurant too i remember how sometimes you don't make sales you get and at mm. the end of the day she was, she was not such a business person she would dash out all the food so i remember her face i remembered all of that and i put it in the song and then i also remember you know i i know a few people who got pregnant and then the the, the men in their lives at the time said you know get you know opted out and all, all of that stuff so that's where auntie Pekin, johnny leave you a card to get passengers they drive anyhow you know and it's because they are trying to make a living like when you see a bus stop and you see passengers you see how they just 
you know, drive and try to get their own passenger. So I'm like, in that song, I'm like, take them slow and easy. Your own passenger, Gwenta. So it was, uh, it was a metaphorical line. You know, it doesn't necessarily, I'm not necessarily talking about just the drivers. I'm just saying, you know, do your stuff easy. And when it's your turn, things will happen for you. So provided you keep pushing and you're consistent. So that was, the song was, is just, um, hope, let them know that it's going to be all right, regardless. So yeah, to bring so that's hope. for the, the lyrics. Yeah, yes. It's a song of hope, literally. I love, so, yeah, I love for, how for you the making of the song. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love how you turned your tragedy into triumph, how you turned something that was seemingly dark because some people, I believe your dad was um, uh, that that backbone for you, a support system for you, yeah. if I must say. So, so for a lot of creative yes. people, that would have drowned drowned them. But then you, yes. you rose back up um, after that and um, you created something really beautiful and I believe the world is going to enjoy this which is cheap. Yeah. So um, you're going to yeah. talk about um, the process of creating. And I must say you are really okay. strong. I what? I said you are really strong. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. So um, hmm, creating the song, because I am an independent artist. I have supporters. I have people who help me, right? But I also do stuff. I have been doing stuff by myself and all. So it wasn't easy creating a, a song like that. And um, a song that required a lot of elements, you know, like the whole, I didn't want it to be, I didn't want everything to be virtual. I wanted it to be real, you know. So mm -hmm. I knew that it was going to cost me a lot. I didn't have the, you know, finances at the time easy so i had to out of a producer but eventually it did not work out with that producer because he got very busy and that was my first frustration because we already started cheerful and it was crazy in fact before that i had it that we, we started it but that was still around daddy's time so i couldn't i sang rubbish in the recording it was horrible <laughs> so we had to pack that um so yeah, I now met this other producer and he was busy. He loved the song, wanted to do it, but he was busy. And I was like, no, I need to record the song. And I, I had um, one of like the woman, there's this lady and she's, she's like the management at the moment. Uh, so she, she was really supportive and she heard the song. From hearing the song, she knew that it's a great song and she wanted me to do it so we can pitch it, so we can release it and do stuff with it. But the production, the process was, was, it was crazy. So I had to now move to cavemen. I'm sure you know the cavemen. Yes, uh, yes, I, I do I know the cavemen. eventually decided to work with them. Yeah, so because I felt like they have this, um, they, this understanding about Igbo music, high life and stuff. So I was like, okay, they understand what Chifo means already. They, sh they should be able to interpret the song so that was how i got on with them and we started and we were going back and forth with the violin whether the violin i remember that it, it was a violin that you know made me like just say you know what this song i must do this i must do the song and so when i now recorded the song there was this back and forth of oh don't put the violin it will be too much you know so i did <laughs> so after the production and they sent me the mix i broke down I cried because Why? I, I get very personal with this. I did not like it. I did not like it. I wasn't feeling it. And I couldn't explain why. Because I was like, I already accepted the fact that, oh, they are producers, so they know better. So, cut long story short, Magical Andy had to step in. My mixing and audio, my audio engineer, uh, he, he mixed and mastered the song. So, he stepped in and he, and then one other producer, the first producer, stepped in again and recorded the violin and that's how they they brought the violin then the mixing engineer added some virtual uh, stuff everything put together was what made cheerful so a lot of hands came on the song i even had my a and r guy or gagus 
Ogagus was there. For um, events. Yeah. I remember also um, you performing during Valentine. That's sometime in February at an event I hosted um, called the Soul Circle. And you yourself, oh. when you were perform, when you were performing, um, two of um, two of those the voice contestants came up on stage to support you. So how's yeah. that? Have you guys built a tribe to support yourself? Um, I believe that's Kelvin and Precious. Precious, yes. And Obichi. Yes. Yes. And yeah, the three of them. So have you guys built this circle of... the? You guys all came out from the same platform and you guys are all supporting yourself as you grow um, in the Nigerian music scene. Mm -hmm. um, so it started from... The voice actually so we're all in a strange place south africa that was where we did uh, the show so we had that bond i don't know i don't know if it if it is the same for the first season because we were on the second season so but for our season we you know after the show even dur during the show we were always supportive of each other um i remember then when people thought Chris Rio and I were dating and how <laughs> we would we would we we thrived on that so we we'll come together when I'm up for eviction Chris Rio's fans will vote for me when he's up my fans will vote for him <laughs> and, and like that so um we've been like a family and when the show was over we just we we did something I, I forgotten what it was called I think sing with the stars so we had a show at the mall, Ikeja City Mall, where we just do it. We did a little setup on the walkway and then people just gathered and they could recognize us. And they gathered and we, we pulled up a show, you know. So, um, yeah, we've been supporting each other ever since. Um, yeah, so, and then most of us now, we are in this group called loud of um loud so it's like a choir we do mashups of um nigerian songs and we're doing pretty well we backed up for um what's it called uh burner boy um during the december show we also did for fino so i mean there's love and i i love it i love it it's rare I, to have singers support each other it's really beautiful what you guys are doing and i just had to bring that up so um chivo is available on what platforms Okay, so it's on every platform. It's on um, Apple Music, iTunes, Deezer, SoundCloud, Not Just Okay, Too Exclusive, Bella Naija, you know, it's on almost all the platforms you can imagine. So, so yes, guys, it's on my, the, the link is on my bio. Please go and check it out. Do the TikTok challenge too. <laughs> Thank you so much for having this with me. And um, all the best with your music. And I'll definitely be streaming cheap on all platforms. I've heard this early, but I'm still going to stream it. Mm -hmm. And um, to every person who's going to watch okay, this, thank you. please also do that as well. Thank you so much. I had so much fun.